Did you know that Spider-Man had his own Subway Surfers-esque runner game? Yeah, Spider-Man Unlimited was a mobile game made by Gameloft that I'm sure many of you had and downloaded back when it came out in September of 2014. But for those of you that haven't, Spider-Man Unlimited was a game about running throughout New York City while collecting vials with a yellow liquid in them that definitely wasn't pee, and beating up any villains or enemies that get in your way. If you've played Subway Surfers or Temple Run, you know how to play this game. This game had such a super cool aesthetic. Everything looks super comic booky. all the character models have outlines. Yuri Lowenthal even voiced Spider-Man in this game. The same one who voices him in the PS4 game. Alright Gabi, you know the drill. Take off that mask and hey, did you get a new outfit? It gets even cooler when you realize that you're not limited to playing as just one Spider-Man either. You could pretty much play as any Spider-Man that wouldn't break several laws to show up in this game. In fact, I'm just gonna name a bunch of random obscure spider people, and I guarantee you that they show up in this game. Uh, Spider-Ham 2099. Spider-Man, but he's the devil. Steampunk Spider-Lady. Spider-Man, but he's a weird-ass priest for some reason. And stay away from him, he might... He might grab you. Spacesuit Spider-Man. Spider-Man in his underwear. This is how deep the references in this game are. But of course you have the classics. You know, you have Peter Parker, a bunch of alternate costumes, other Spider-Men like Miles Morales, Spider-Man 2099, or Spider-Man Noir. This game deserves the title of Spider-Man Unlimited way more than the TV show. The amount of Spider-Man in this game really is close to Unlimited. There's also a surprising amount of non-Spider characters, like Black Cat, Nick Fury, or Silver Sable, which is weird because they can still do all the Spider-Man stuff that you can do in this game. I guess Pete's lending out his web shooters now. But less weirder characters you can play as show up, like Venom and Carnage. Pretty much any symbiote character you could ask for is here. Literally any character that's even sneezed in the direction of a spider is here. But now that I've greased this game up for you, I bet you really want to boot up the App Store and go and look for it. But you can't. The game is discontinued and it is now inaccessible to the public. That's such a shame because this game was genuinely so much fun, and it played a huge part in the later years of my childhood. I'd sit in class playing Spider-Man Unlimited instead of listening to my teachers. Which is, which is probably why I'm a YouTuber instead of a doctor or something. It's such a shame because Spider-Man is a character that works so well within the settings of a runner game. He swings, he crawls, he runs along buildings, and Spider-Man Unlimited takes advantage of this. You see, you don't just run in this game. You can do everything else Spider-Man can too. When Spider-Man runs to the end of a building, you'll be forced to jump off and swing until the next building. This is done by holding your finger on the screen and releasing to swing and to not swing, etc. The crawling isn't as impressive, you just tilt your phone out of the way to move Peter out of the way of falling debris that's flying at you for some reason. These same tilt controls come back when you have to leap all the way down to ground level too, and it's just as finicky. Honestly, this is the mobile game genre that was really meant for Spider-Man, and I'm still really sad to see it gone. Even if I miss it so, I will have to admit that some of the Spider-Men in this game are really odd looking. Like I get it, some poor Gameloft employee has to stay overnight and design 15 million Spider-Men. Some of them are definitely gonna look a little funny. I'm still gonna point it out though. I don't know what they were smoking while making this, but for some reason the classic suit just has this weird ass mask. It's definitely due to how long the lenses on the mask are, but despite it looking weird, I don't think it, it's the worst thing in the world. It's still pretty charming. I appreciate how the lenses have a shine to them. Except for some reason, almost everyone else in this game who wears a classic Spidey mask has a way better set of lenses. Cyborg Spider-Man's mask looks awesome, and on top of that, his classic suit looks way better than the main one. Winter Spider-Man's mask isn't too much to comment on, I just think it fits his face well and the lenses have a nice shape. Spider-Man India, Spider-UK, and even Spider-Punk have debatably better looking masks than Peter's does. 
Spider-Man 2099 gets both of his costumes done wrong in this game. Oddly enough, in the same place, his back. The black 2099 suit has a weird spider on the back, and the white suit just has the same logo on the front as the back. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get a reference photo for this to prove it, but just trust me, I had this suit in this game. Miles' mask looks like poopy. It suffers from the same issues that Peter's does, but at least Peter's mask had some effort put into it. These lenses just look kind of drawn on, and they don't really fit well at all onto his face. They're just too long and lack sharp curves. They've got some pretty cool variants from Peter's closet at least. Some of my favorites are the Spider Armor Suit, the Future Foundation, Ends of the Earth, Parker Industries, and the Iron Spider Suits. All of these costumes have such bright and vibrant color palettes, and I really enjoy how they're designed. They also have maskless variants for some of these characters too. Miles, Gwen, MJ, Mayday Parker, all have versions of their suits maskless, with their pretty faces all on display. Gwen and Mayday, weirdly enough, look like Disney princesses. It's kind of freaky because their faces look like the most detailed things in the game. It's genuinely shocking how many playable characters are in this game. Not only that, but several other alternate Spider-Man suits too. Just watching videos of people looking through all the suits in this game is a pretty decent investment of time. Speaking of suits, how do you unlock Spider-Man in this game? You obviously don't have all the Spider-Man from the jump, so you gotta unlock them. So how do you do it? Stupid ass lottery games. So essentially there's two forms of currency in Spider-Man Unlimited, piss vials and kidney stones, also known as ISO 8. These crystals are super hard to come across and it'll cost you about 25 to 50 if I remember correctly to unlock a new Spider-Man if I remember correctly. You could look into the pool and see what Spider-Man you could get, but you could never pick which one you wanted. If you got the one you liked, awesome. If you don't, the game says fuck you, give me 25 more, or go outside and go get some. Or steal your mother's credit card. It's not like it was too hard to get ISO 8 when the game was popping. There were events that would happen that would correspond with ongoing real world events involving Spider-Man. There was a Venomverse event that made it so the symbiotic characters I mentioned earlier could be playable. There was a Spider-Man Homecoming event too, which even spawned a real-life arcade cabinet that runs a heavily edited version of Spider-Man Unlimited. It features two skins that were added to Spider-Man Unlimited for the Spider-Man Homecoming movie release, the Stark suit and the homemade suit. Also, this arcade game sucks. All you can do is press one button to move Spider-Man out of the way in time. I played it, I, I hate it. There was even an Infinity War event where Thanos was put into the game as a boss, along with the Iron Spider costume from the MCU movies. Guys, look, guys, look. Spider-Man can beat Thanos in long lost game Spider-Man Unlimited. So, sorry guys, Spider-Man solos. He solos, you know, he beat Thanos, he solo. But then after that, things went really quiet for Spider-Man Unlimited. A new Spider-Man movie was coming soon, one that looked like it was even more of a love letter to the Spider-Verse than even the mobile game itself was. But there were no events in sight for the game. I knew something was wrong, and I knew that this silence could mean the end for Spider-Man Unlimited. And I was proven right. Spider-Man Unlimited was quickly discontinued, and as far as I can tell, there was no reason given to the public either. And that's just depressing. This game shut down at a time where Spider-Man was on top of the world in terms of superheroes. He just got his first animated movie, the first installment in his AAA video game franchise just dropped, he was a huge part of the new Avengers movie, he was at the top of his game. There was a market for this game out there somewhere, and there were still many avenues gone unexplored. I can imagine this game continuing on to this very day, with new events based on recent comics, video games, or even movies. But alas, there is no greedy mega corporation to continue feeding us our Spider-Man runner game content. Gameloft and Marvel parted ways, and we were left with a small, yet nostalgic hole in our hearts. But wait. Spider-Man Unlimited is still playable! I lied! All you have to do is find the App Store account that you downloaded the game with when it was still available, then go into your previous purchases and download the game! You can't play through it as much as you could have back in the day, but hey, the runner part is still intact. I miss this game, and you know, I hope you do too. Maybe the community can come together to push for this game's return or something. 
It's not like there's a big movie coming out soon that would correspond heavily with the return of this game. Uh, but anyway, big return or not, I'm just glad I could talk about a game I loved. And hopefully you loved, too. There was also a giant, like, campaign for this game. I remember it was like six worlds long. Each world was dedicated to one of the Sinister Six members. This game had a plot. So the plot was that, like, several members of the Sinister Six were coming down into Spidey's main dimension, and they were looking for ISO-8 or whatever. So Spider-Man has to team up with a bunch of other spider people in S.H.I.E.L.D. to fight all of these Sinister Six variants, and, um, I remember there were certain levels in the game you could only play if you had a specific Spider-Man, which is kind of bullshit, but I, I, I see the appeal. Um, there was an events tab, uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot to this game that I did not cover in this video. It probably would have been helpful if I had a working copy of the game here with me that I could go over, but alas, even the quote-unquote working copy I could get my hands on was heavily, heavily stripped. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's all. I love you, Spider-Man Unlimited. Please come back. Come back, please, please come back.